and so and so I says, have you got anything left on the menu? And they say yes, roasted pork. But your family will have to watch you eat it. <laughs> Because when I start a children's movie, I like to start it with cannibalistic guilt. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Welcome, um, one and all, to the Big Damn Cast. Hello. No, it's not the Christmas episode. You'll have to wait till you're digesting your turkey for that treat. But uh, we're here with some uh, intergalactic sci-fi bullshit to discuss before we disappear neath a pine tree for our mini winter solstice. I, um, I am Maz Kanada. And I am the plot everyone loves. Oh, well, this is going to be interesting. Boys and girls, <laughs> boys and girls, just to, just to give you a heads up as to what the hell's about to happen. If you couldn't tell from the thumbnail, the title and everything else, we're talking The Last Jedi. But interestingly enough, during a brief interaction the other day, Matt and I realised we have polarizing opinions of the last jedi we um i mean i'm sure i'm sure we're going to agree on a bunch of stuff but then there's also going to be other stuff where it's like we're sat at the other side we'll be like um we'll be like kim basinger and michael keaton in batman that scene where they're at the end of the long table occasionally we will pass each other the salt eventually we will move to the kitchen and michael goff will join us and then we'll go upstairs and shag so i don't think i've ever seen this room before um (laughs) God, that's a good film. But is The Last Jedi? That's what we're here to find out. Yes. Um, but not only that, there was, a, there, was a brief, there was a brief spell this week, gentle listener, where we were in the same physical space. The same actual physical space. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. I, I came to see your pantomime. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Phantom Menace background character, isn't it? Pantomime. <laughs> pantomime. No, it's a casino planet. Um, oh, right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was such a lovely treat. The, my favorite part was the fact that I didn't know you guys were coming, but about five minutes before I just before I, you know before the uh, call, I just happened to look at my Snapchat because I'm a no notifications guy, fam. You know, I'm, I, I I like to not have a buzz in my pocket every five bloody minutes. But I checked my Snapchat, and sure enough, there was little Matthew. Little me. He'd sent me a picture of the front of the new Theatre Royal. I was like, oh my god, he's outside! (laughs) What would be really funny if I hadn't come to see the show, I was just outside the theatre for two hours. That'd be disturbing. It also means that shout out would have been a bit weird. Yeah. No one would have replied. (laughs) Well, I'm sure that happened to someone else. So. But, I mean, that's happened before. I, I, yeah, last year I had to do the shout outs, and if there was no response, I'd just take the piss out of whoever wasn't there. People um, get gun shy, you know? It's, <laughs> especially because we confront them with guns. For some way <laughs> um, I managed to sneak the podcast theme into that performance as well. I, I noticed. About that. I, I, I was quite enjoyed that. that. <laughs> I quite enjoyed that. Um, so, you know, marketing, innit? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's how it works, kids. So hello to all of the new subscriber who was there on, uh, <laughs> on Sunday's show. From your show. heads to your tippy toes. <laughs> um, oh, God, what else? Before we dive into the muff of Star Wars. Um, uh, well, the, the Disney Fox deal is now official. Oh, my God. Do you know what? I'm going to wait till... I think I want to wait till the new year before we... We dissect that in its entirety because I think we're going to learn a bit more over Christmas about it's still it's still pending approval from the American authorities. But, but doesn't everyone's just, acting like it's gone through already. Doesn't it just knock you sick? It's it it is the <laughs> beginning of a monopoly. Yeah, yeah, and it that, it's not good. Fr- friend of the show, I say friend of the show. I don't know if he's ever listened, but he's certainly a, a lovely man who I've spent time with. Um, Joel H. Jolson. Uh, tweeted out, I think, the best summary of it all. You know that weird meme where people put a, the clap emoji between words? Yeah. Uh, he ironically used it to make a genuinely brilliant point, and it was essentially, um, you know, like, hooray for you, your favourite characters can play together, but hey, guess what? Monopolies are bad. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... I think- thank you very much. That's 
Yes. <laughs> I think the first estimate came out as something like between five and 10,000 people will lose their jobs in this merger. Yeah. So, That's woo, fucking isn't, crazy. isn't it great that we can have the X-Men in Disney now, guys? Isn't that, isn't that great? Do you want to do you want to tell how great that is to the families of those people who are about to lose their jobs? Do you want to do, you want to do that, guys? It's no good. It's not. It's not worth it. It's, it's not, not worth it. I mean, if we looked at it on, on on a completely just basic level, yay, Fantastic Falls with Disney. My inner child can't wait to see what happens there. But that is like li- that is like number seven hundred on the list of priorities associated with this. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean. It's just. Like, I can go without getting a decent Fantastic Four movie if it means 10,000 odd people keeping their jobs. I've resigned myself to not having a good Fantastic Four movie. Mm. Like, yeah. Well, you know, we've got, we've, we've got one, but every, the internet has cottoned on to that reference now, so there's no, yeah. point, no point saying it out loud again. Oh, you all God. know the one. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, that's the... That's <laughs> hey! The good hey. Well, um, speaking of League of Gentlemen... Uh, have, yes, you watched, have you watched either of the two eps that have gone out as of the recording of this episode? I've seen the first one. I, did. I haven't had a chance to watch last night's yet. Oh, last I'll, night's as this is going out, yeah. I'll say no more. Yeah, this, we're recording yeah. this on uh, the 20th, guys, so the, the last episode is yet to air. Um, but, oh my God, it's exquisite. It's so exquisite. good. Exquisite! It, it, it's simultaneously not pandering to the fan base of the show... Uh, uh, and being, you know, exclusive to everyone else. Like, it's definitely being very inclusive to curious parties. Um, (laughs) But also it's delivering on little nods to stuff that nutters for this show like myself have been dying to find out how they're going to resolve. But at the same time, it's taking a shit on most of the British comedy from the last decade. Which, to be fair, isn't that hard. It really isn't. I mean, just, oh, there's, <laughs> I, I can't wait for you to see episode two. There, there's, um, you know how occasionally Mark would have a character who'd yeah. just, it'd be a one-off or maybe pop up twice, who'd just kind of have a monologue. And, yeah, and it, yeah. It'd just, it'd just be a, a, an exercise in comedy and tragedy and, you know, like delivery. Um, Even though these specials are, you know, obviously revisiting characters we know and love, uh, in the second one, there's a new character who's a bingo caller called Toddy, who okay. is ba- it's Mark Gatiss under heavy makeup playing a, a sympathetic grotesque, and it's the best thing about the episode. It's so good, <laughs> like, it's really good. Um, oh god, oh, I'm oh mate, you need to play on with episode two. Um, two words that will entice you to do it as soon as possible. What are they? Legs akimbo. Ah! So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I oh god, it's 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 brilliant. Um, I don't want to say I don't want to say much more in case people haven't watched either or all three of them as of listening to this. But I'm just oh I'm 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 a, I, I, th- I thought I'd be a little biased because uh, spoiler alert, if you've been paying attention to the three episodes, uh, I'm in the third one as an extra. But um, I I thought. I'd be a little biased, obviously, because I love the show. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm just sitting back and being overwhelmed by how brilliant it is in that way where I'm like, I'm surprised it's this good. But I knew it'd be oh. good, but it's this It's, um, yeah, so... I, I watched I watched the first one with my dad, um, and we were both just <laughs> roaring the whole way through. That... Just r- roaring with laughter. The Easter eggs are so well done as well. Like in that first one on the radio in that, in Al's kitchen, you just had the and now the shipping forecast with Pamela Doof. And in the background you've just got <laughs> on the radio. It's just like, oh my god. And, I and then know, it, I think it, it does a it does a Doctor Who then, it does a remembrance. Because it, yeah. it it goes into on the radio in the background you hear it saying, you know, uh, now on BBC four BBC Radio Four, a new series on the town with the leak and it cut away. <laughs> and it was like oh, <laughs> nice. Um and and what oh god there was uh, the psychoville uh, nods in there hidden around especially yeah. inside the uh, makeshift um, retail outlet shall we say inside the council <laughs> flats uh, and also the, the massive bloody Easter egg and wink and nod at the end of the first episode yeah yeah that as, was Ed, great. as, as the as the door is closed and you see exactly what number they're living in it's like oh that's brilliant. 
That is absolutely brilliant. So, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Dries Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton expanded universe confirmed. Um, Yay! So- <laughs> I'm 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 loving it so far. I can't wait for tonight. Uh, I yeah yay good things things we both agree on are good. Yay! yay. What else are we talking about, man? <laughs> so Star Wars: The Last Jedi came out. Oh god! And it split the internet in twain. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, like a lightning rod to a bark. Let's Just... talk. Let's talk general. <laughs> Non spoilers. Yeah, um, I, th- I think I think it's safe to reviews. assume, gentle listener, the majority of this podcast is going to be a big old spoiler fest. But and you do you do not want while. this fucking movie spoiled for you. That's true. Like, even the I less have... you know about this movie going in, yeah, the better. Much like the Force Awakens, there are things here that are best saved for your first viewing, and not articles or podcasts before. So yes, we shall give you a big old spoiler warning once we begin. Um, but as for now, general thoughts. Hello, I'm General Thought. Um, I'm an ex-military man who's here to talk about Star Wars. Chris. No, I'm General Thought. All right, yeah. What? I fucking love The Last Jedi. <laughs> I Hit think me. it is... Hit me, brother. Brilliant. It is uh, visually stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's It's got such a, a, a dense story with so much character development. Um, it moves everything forward and it moves things in, in a in an un uh, an Uncharted unpredictable direction. Speech. Like, like you didn't you didn't see this coming. You didn't you don't see any of the stuff in this movie this coming. This is not it, going to go the way you think. No, it is really the, the, the not. Film, the film very that is very much a big part of its message, isn't it? Is is this yeah. is not this is not your daddy's Star Wars. This is going to do something different. You know, it's ballsy and exciting and, and tense and emotional. And it's all the things that Star Wars is when it's at its best. And it's just a, a tour de force of exciting ideas and and, and people doing amazing things and, and heart. It's got real heart behind it. And I just love it. I love The Last Jedi so much. It's 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 amazing. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's wonderful. <clears throat> oh, Matthew, you beautiful man. What did what what did you think about the last Jedi? It's like three out of ten, mate. <laughs> <laughs> was, oh no! I, I wasn't a fan. I well, it was it was it it took me a couple days to realise that I didn't like it. I'll be honest. Uh, so last year. Tiny bit of background. Last year, I was here in Lincoln as well, uh, doing panto, and myself and the uh, two members of the band, Mike and Mark, uh, both went to see uh, Rogue One. And we couldn't go to midnight screening because we had a show like the next morning, so we went to the night of release at like the ten thirty showing. And we decided that if I'm back next year, which turned out was the case, we'll do it again for the Last Jedi, and we did again. It was the night of release, not the midnight screening. Um, ten thirty, sat down. So excited after a long day, just like cannot wait. And as as hit at the end, we all just kind of looked at each other and we're like, I I don't know how to feel. And that feeling carried on for about a day. And and, and eventually, I I between trying to remember when my props needed to be and. Like, what time I needed to be at the theatre and everything. <laughs> I had to think about it. And I was just like, oh. The, the le- in, in summary, The Last Jedi is a visually stunning movie. It has some wonderful, wonderful sci-fi action set pieces. It has some great character beats. And it has some really great acting from specifically a handful of the cast do some really, really brilliant things. Uh, that's not to undersell everyone else, but there's a handful that really do a you know a proper juggling act. Yeah, and, there are and, definitely some standout performances. Yeah, um, the problem for me is uh, I like the fact that it's challenging the structure of Star Wars and is going in a new direction. I just wish it didn't have to jettison so much cargo willy nilly to do it. And similarly, I think one of its characters in particular as interesting as their journey in this chapter is, I feel like it is a different character than the one we actually have spent time with before. 
um, in a way that felt a little jarring. It didn't feel like a, oh, we don't know what's really going on here. Do you know what I mean? And now we're going to find out what's happened. It felt more like, did you, I, I don't know. I, I feel that both the, 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 the fact that Ryan Johnson was the writer and director of this movie proved to be its biggest strength and its biggest weakness. Um, but we'll get more into that. For, I, I, annoyingly, spoilers is where I'll, I'll be able to explain a lot of that Yeah, be, because a lot, of, a lot of what has polarised people about this movie is specific story beats. Yeah. And the way certain characters are handled. Um, yeah. Handled. <laughs> He's not in it. Spoiler alert, for, spoiler alert for a two-year-old movie. He's not in it. Um, yeah. um, uh, but his force ghost is... It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I, I still would recommend, if you're a Star Wars fan, going to see it and definitely going to see it in the cinema. Because you're either going to love it or not love it or apparently, according to some of the internet, seethe with rage over it. You're going to um, start a petition to get it struck Oh my official god, cannon. Star Wars fans, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> don't, don't you dare turn into these freaking idiots who are pissing into the wind like the Rotten Tomatoes, Suicide Squad stuff and all this. The Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. Just stop. It's pathetic. You don't understand, Christopher. This is just Disney paying off critics for good reviews. No, critics enjoyed themselves for the most part, and that's good. I wish I did. <laughs> God damn oh, it. Oh, I enjoyed myself so much. I'm, I'm really looking forward I'm to seeing so it again. Glad, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Like, we, we talked about it briefly the other night, and I said, like, so what did you think? And you just beamed. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I want that. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I want that. <laughs> It's an odd one. Let's let's talk non spoiler like um non spo- non spoiler highlights and lowlights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, highlights. Kylo Ren is still the best thing about this new trilogy. Oh, Kylo Ren is fabulous in this. Adam Driver is mm. just brilliant. He's superb in this. And and again, as Luke says, this is not going to go the way you think. But uh, also him and and Daisy Ridley. Yeah. Does, yeah does, I, I, I almost they're... wish there was a bit more for them to do in this almost even yeah in, in a good way in a i i want to see more of these two interacting um and the fact that you know i want that feeling shows that the film obviously gave us the right amount because you know we're hankering for a conclusion to their story um but adam driver's superb in this uh it's the the stuff with the first order in the force awakens i really liked because it was it was basically here's the space alt right like yeah. here's the space alt right and not the not necessarily the active alt right but the alt right who bitch and moan on twitter yeah. like whiny teenagers and, and i think they are with trench coats and guns <laughs> i think they double down on that in this movie especially with hooks it, in, a, yeah. in a way that i found incredibly satisfying yeah oh god don't <clears throat> donald gleason is hamming the hell out of every frame he's in yeah and clearly having a ball doing it um, he look. I love how much more sickly he looks in this. Yeah, like he's paler and darker purple bags around his eyes. It's just like, oh my god! And that's before there's a a bit of a a dynamic shift that puts him in a worse position than before. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I liked Andy Serkis's performance as Snoke a hell of a lot. Yeah, um, I want. I mean, Andy Serkis is a safe bet. He's always good. Yeah, but but it was it was cool to. <laughs> Snoke felt like a very physical, solid character within the frame. He he's a performance capture character, but he didn't feel like a performance capture character. He, he no, felt no. like that was a real solid. I mean, that's down to the effects work and the performance and everything. But I just mean, you know, he's he looks he just looks like a deformed human. Like so, he, they're not pushing it too far. You're not. I mean, to suspend your disbelief too much. Yeah. But but it, yeah. it's it was cool. Like, we saw him in the last one being all prophetic and doom and gloom and big hologram. And here, he was, I'm in the room and I'm smug as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and it, 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 it worked so well. You, you truly believe that he was um, a, a force to be reckoned with. And, and it has, you know, he's wielding some pretty serious, like, force magic, pretty much. And also like, pimping it in that seriously pimping gold robe. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm living in a lap of luxury. Clashed, clashed with his throne a bit, but I'll agree. <laughs> well, yeah. 
Um, but he, he needed so a bit, cool. needed a bit more red, you know. But um, he's uh, yeah. I I and, and again, like I I wish we had more of Snoke. I do feel like we didn't get enough, but what we got was really cool in this mm-hmm. movie. Um, what else? Uh, a, a bit of a low light. There's a there's the, there's an introduction of a wonderful new character called Rose, who is a very Star Wars character like she, you know that idealistic like you know she, she's she's luke if luke wanted to go on an adventure like immediately at the start of new hope like the luke we know wants to get out there and do bigger things but he's not yeah. like yeah i want to get involved with a smuggler and, and, and an old space knight and you know he's not like that he's just like yeah let's do stuff <laughs> whereas rose is very much like oh my god fighting the bad guys sounds amazing i want to be a hero I've had a tragic loss in my family that's sort of solidified that's what I want to do now, for definite. Yeah. And then yeah. she meets Finn, and she regards Finn in the same way that Ray uh, and Finn regarded Han in the last one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you know, oh my god, you're, you're Finn! Um, like, you, you defected from the Empire and helped, helped save the... save the uh, yeah, Sorry, Empire. You defected from the First Order and you helped... Same thing. Um, you defected from the First yeah, Order much. and helped save the Resistance. Oh my god, you're amazing. So she's lovely, but then she and he go on a subplot that, though providing some wonderful moments, you could take out of the movie completely. See, this is one of the things that that I have disagreed on as a criticism because... That's fine. Yeah, pacing-wise, it it sags the movie a little, and that is definitely a downside. But in terms of the character arcs, for Finn particularly, it is absolutely essential. Okay. absolutely essential for that character's journey from what he is at the beginning of this film to what he is at the end. Oh, here's one thing that uh, I'm curious to see if you found naff or not. What? The fact that we arrived at Canto Bight, there was another, like, here's our tuny music scene setting tune thing. Like, um, in Force Awakens, when they arrive at Maz Kanada's place and you've got that, the poor, poor lead, like, whatever that <laughs> is. Where it's, obvi- it's obviously them going, huh? Cantina? Huh? That this is our version? Huh? Uh, yeah. In-, in Force Awakens, it didn't feel gross. It sort of was like, okay, more music from Star Wars, all right. But in this, it sounded a bit, uh, like the tune was too close to the Cantina band tune. Yeah, I was just but like, I think- well, that's awkward. <laughs> I think I think it's also a it's a stark contrast to the to the to the one we saw in the Force Awakens with it yeah. being all glitzy and stuff. So I can I can buy that music, and I think it's just a good shorthand to sort of introduce the mm. the tone of, yeah. of the place of, of you're going into. Yeah. Although, although one um, one thing that threw me off tonally in Canto by what the hell was Joseph Gordon Levitt doing voicing that creature? <laughs> he's, he's, vo- he's, vo- he's voicing like one of the one of the staff or whatever and he's complaining to the authorities about the parking he's just like I'm an alien it's like what the fuck are you doing after oh, I found out it was Joseph Gordon Levitt I was like why that voice like, that's, that's hardly, so weird that, that's hardly the weirdest that alien has ever sounded in Star Wars <laughs> it didn't it didn't it didn't strike me as odd I must admit it didn't because I mean I mean look look at what else is, is happening on screen and, that, yeah, and that's the thing that strikes you as odd. Best best bit of the entire movie was on Canto Bight, though. Despite my despite my um, tetchiness with the sequence as a whole, the best bit of the movie was on Canto Bight. It was that tiny little alien in a tux trying to play BB-8, thinking it was, <laughs> it was, a, it was a, a casino machine. And even that gets a payoff later on. As yes, well. it did. Yeah, that was well. So, that was well done. Um, so this this movie is entirely. It is mechanically just so pleasing because it's like a clock the way it's assembled and the way everything is set up and paid I, yeah off, i think it's... i think that's i think that's something we have to make clear because there'll be people there might be people who, who feel like me who didn't enjoy the movie who are, are listening to you saying that going like what are you talking about no i'm sorry that is definitely true like yeah, that, that, as, is... as its own piece of cinema it it works very well like as it's, its made own up. film, absolutely. The, res- the the reservations and bumps I think I have are, are to do with its ongoing story. Yeah, um, you may not like the things it sets up and pays off. Yeah, but, but in, ter- in terms of what that. happens in the movie, it, it, yeah, you're right. Mechanically, it it is it knows what it's doing. It is an instruction manual. It has beginning, middle, end, and this bit means that that bit can happen and that bit can happen. That bit can happen. So that is very true. And and well, yeah, like you say, the payoff there was quite a sweet one. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. um what else? I like DJ, uh, Benicia del Toro's character, who we saw nothing of, really, yeah, until yeah, the yeah. film. Um, we knew he was in it, 
and we knew he was playing a con man and a huckster, yeah, a huckster, yeah, yeah. A, a huckster and that was it. Um, he's fun. Uh, it, it does almost feel a bit like oh, by the time his story ends. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he, as an actor, does he's clearly some, having fun with it. Yeah, yeah, he does something really cool with a role that could be pretty just straightforward and forgettable. Um, so that was cool, fam. Um, what else did I like? Um, I wish Daisy Ridley had been given a, a little bit more to do. That's not to say Ray isn't in the movie. She's very much the, the, the centre of the story. But um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of time spent on the island dedicated to her just wandering around trying to figure out what's meant to happen next. And And though that makes sense, you know, in terms of the whole, like, you know, she's persisting. It's about her persistence. Yeah. I do yeah. almost wish that we got to see Ray in at least another location or two at some point. Just so Daisy could um, play around a bit more with with uh, her range. Because in this she was she was verging a bit on Return of the Jedi's first 40 minutes Luke Skywalker. Do you know what I mean? Where it's just sort of like, she's kind of just, this is my thing and I'm going to do this. And you're going to help me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, no, I'll give her a bit more to do. But that being said, uh, Daisy Ridley can kick some serious ass. Yeah, I think I think they um I think they break it up a bit with the with the Ray and Kylo stuff. Um for me was what I found with that. Um and that was brilliant. Again without going into details, yeah, that that little twist on yeah. on Force mythology was brilliant because it was intriguing. It was like, wait, hang on, they can do this. Mhm. Of course. And there's a lot these, these there's are a lot these, of that. these are the most yeah. Aside from, like, Anakin, these are the, the, the two most in-tune Force users we've ever seen. So, of course, yeah. they're going to do shit we've not seen before. Yeah. and um, But also, if you've, if you've followed any of the new canon stuff, you have seen some of that stuff before, so... Well, the, actually, the, the, the story if you've read the been... books and you've watched Star Wars Rebels... No, I, I'm not going to take the piss. I, I agree, Star Wars Rebels is, is the shit. Like, <laughs> but, like, yeah, like... so Please that, forgive the, the me, sto- Matthew. The story group as a whole is. I mean, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really up to date on all that stuff. But I'm aware that it's <clears> that it's out there and he's doing bits and pieces like that, like foreshadowing stuff that's going to come in the movies. So yeah, there, there, there's, a, there's, um, a, there's a bit in Rebels in which a character does what uh, Ray and um, and Kylo do in this movie. Yeah, and you know, to, even, to, a, to e- a degree. But to be fair, even if that stuff wasn't in the uh, in the wider expanded universe, it's, I don't think it'd be out of place no. here. No, I think because it, because it, it, I think it is. It's played quite... as a discovery. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, that, and I think a lot of that stuff is. I think the biggest problem, um, that a lot of the people who don't like this movie have is is, is something that I really like about it, in that. Not all the questions, uh, that have been asked are answered, and the ones that are. Are answered in a way that you don't expect. Yeah, there's and, a, there's, there's obviously one big one which I, 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 I yeah. you know which one I'm on about in particular that um, fans have been speculating about for two years, and I I I like what the actual answer is. Yeah, um, I th- I do yeah, think yeah. that's a really nice idea because it's it is not going to go the way you think. But also, uh, it's it's <laughs> it's neat because it it. It plays with that perception that has come uh, in the last 10, 10, 15 years where a franchise, um, part of the backbone of it is like an ongoing mystery and that the film sort of owes you answers, which is a misconception on the part of the audience. And Mm, this film turns around and goes, actually, no, this film doesn't owe you any answers. This is not this 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 story we're telling is is not a mystery. What it is is an adventure, and there are things that pop up in here that don't get backstories and don't get explanations because they don't need them because that's not what this story is about. Yeah, and I and I really liked that sort of um, focus that comes with this movie. <laughs> um, there's um, that, that, that I mean, yeah. there's a musical hint as to what we're talking about. Um, there's there are some there are a couple of parallels with Empire, and I don't mean thematically. I, there, there's a couple of bits in this movie I can think of at least three off the top of my head that are just, hey, Empire did this. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember that? And I yeah. think I think at least two of them work, 
I think one of them's a bit odd. Um, but well, all at of the them. same time, the film doesn't try to be The Empire Strikes Back. It's just nodding towards it. So yeah, I mean, all of so them, much. all of those things <clears throat> are subtle. Yeah, uh, compared to <laughs> anything in The Force Awakens. Yeah, um, um, which got... again, I don't have a problem with. Like, I I yeah, love how the, the Force Awakens. The Force Awakens re- was necessary. Yeah, I love how it revisits uh, old tr- old themes from a new hope and old ideas. I, I think it's, it's absolutely necessary to do that, to set the tone. Yeah. And, um, and I think, it, I think it does make this one for better or worse. Like, you know, well, I guess we'll know by the end of the third film, but it does mean that this one and the direction this one goes in, um, has a lot more of an impact because yeah. the previous one was like, Hey, it's kind of the same, but there's new stuff, but it's, you know, it's kind of the same. And then this one goes, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> and changes that completely. <laughs> um, which, yeah, again, like in some ways, I agree absolutely is 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 for the benefit of of what's going to happen going forwards and for challenging uh, it's, challenging its audience. I think that's the thing I respect this movie the most for. It challenges its audience. Yeah, and it's um, absolutely necessary for this hmm. franchise to continue. You yeah. can't just make another trilogy <clears throat> of the same stories. Um, you I mean you have to do it well? You can't because the the prequels did did their own thing. But they were fucking terrible. Yeah, like they were just poorly made movies. Over, what, overstuffed, what and made them? Yeah, what they, what made them bad wasn't that they were doing something different. What made them bad was that they were bad. They yeah. were just poorly written, poorly filmed. They, poorly they were doing it all at the same time, and it became a giant soup of bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, rather than I a think... concentrated can of lovely bullshit soup. Yes, exactly. I love lovely bu- bullshit soup. Concentrated this week, only. This week's episode sponsored by Bullshit Soup. <laughs> Um, it's a bit nutty. Uh, now, oh, 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 naughty. Um, yeah, I think I think <clears throat> this movie did what Star Wars needs to do, and it evolved. Yeah. Um, and it evolved beyond a lot of the ideas that have sort of held the Star Wars, particularly the old expanded universe, the Legends expanded universe, sort of held it hostage because it had to keep coming back to a certain set of themes and ideas, and this moves beyond that in a meaningful way which to me has me very excited about the prospect of where this series goes next yeah because it's it's just it's opened the door for more stuff basically without getting into too much specifics again because the spoilers so um yeah on, it's, on, 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 a, on a similar side of a similar coin like I too, um, I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest, after, after this movie, I'm not really particularly excited about the next one, but I am intrigued as fuck about it. Like, I, yeah, I'm what they're going to do with it. I'm where they're going to go with it. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not <sighs> chomping at the bit, but I am, I'm like, okay, like, come on films, show me where you're going, what's happening, what is, yeah. what is part yeah, yeah. three of this story, because I have no idea what it could be at this point. Um, which is which is nice. It is nice not to know. Um, just other stuff has, has sort of diffused the excitement slightly for me. But we'll we will get into that shortly as we head towards spoilers. Uh, do you want to throw in any last sort of uh, a positive or or negative or simply just a nitpick before we go into spoilers? No, I, I think I think we need to just dive into spoilers and see what happens. Let's dive right into. Let's dive into spoilers like an unexplained black hole in the middle of a rock. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Time codes are in the show notes. Yep. Um, I'll start. Go ahead. Go po, ahead. Poe and ahead, Finn Christopher. don't bone. No, they don't. And that's disappointing. It is a little but, bit hey. upsetting. And, and that's that's more of a nitpick, really, because it's more that's more fan service. But let's be honest. There are a couple of scenes in the last one. The vibe majority of the internet got from it was... These two are kind of cute together. Like, <laughs> this is interesting. Like, okay. And there is a detail in the movie, which I only found out about afterwards watching some interviews, um, that suggests that Poe, it not necessarily has a thing for Finn, but definitely, like, cares about him. Um, because he's wearing Poe's jacket again in this movie when he comes yeah. around, but it's repaired because obviously it had a big old gash up it. In the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, apparently, according to Ryan Johnson in an interview, Poe repaired the jacket and left it for Finn for when he wakes up. Well, yeah. Which is really sp- sweet. 
Because uh, Poe's a nice dude. I just, I just, no, he's not, Matt. He's a hot-headed renegade who got fifty <laughs> people killed, despite no, the is, fact, though, you, and despite that's the brilliant. fact you only needed to send one of them out to do the job, apparently. Um, yeah, I know, and that's, but that's why. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's Finn's that's Poe's arc for this movie, like, and it's and I think it's really well done. Is 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 that thing of of Leia turning around and, and saying you can't you can't just solve everything. By blowing blowing stuff up. Yeah, look at, yeah we, we, we won that opening skirmish. Yeah. But look at how many people we lost. We lost all our bombers. Yeah. Even we though lost, they only needed like, to send one out. It's, it's totally, this is totally a nitpick, because I know it's more in service for Poe's narrative. And I, I, I do love the fact that Poe became a main character in this one. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was he was one of the main characters this time around. Um, and, and his story was... I, I, like, I like his art. I really do, but I'll, I also have at least two nitpicks about his story arc that really bug me. <laughs> and it's so stupid, because they, these are little problems. Like, the main reason why I didn't love the movie is down to some bigger stuff, which I'll I'll get into later. But but like yeah. as far as nitpicky reasons goes, I loved Oscar Isaac's performance. I loved how his arc was told throughout this film. But at the same time, I was like, well, that one bomber blew it up, and... Just why don't you just send a couple of bombers to that part of the ship? Surely that would have done the job. Because and not, and not risk the lives of up, up to fifty odd fighters and, and yeah. But whatnot. look, <laughs> if you'd have only sent two bombers, they'd have got taken out straight away. Because look at what happened to the rest of the bombers. But, but hey, but hey, 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 hey. Only what? Only yeah, one that's got fine, through. Because according to this movie, nitpick alert, nitpick alert. According to this movie, if they got hit, the bombs would have dropped because there's gravity in space now. So that's fine. That's totally cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I know. I know they do with the show, like, the bombs have to be armed to work. But, you know, still, it's like, if a ship had a shot of a ship full of bombs, it would have blown up still, so... Yeah, but you can also go, blah, 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 blah. Um, that, the, <laughs> the Star, that Star Destroyer is big enough to have its own gravity well. Boom, there you go. Yeah, just one, one line, just one throwaway line. One throwaway line. And also, why didn't Laura Dern explain her plan at any point? She didn't because do she didn't do it so he would learn a lesson. No, she didn't do it because she thought there might be a spy. <laughs> Did she genuinely think that? Well, yeah, it, I mean, because here's it... my question, Matt: Why wasn't she the spy? That would have been awesome. No. Uh, then again, no. That's not the movie they gave us, and that's fine. But I, I would have loved to have watched Laura Dern suddenly just be like, "Oh fuck it, I'm trying to kill you all. Bye." Especially I think they play with that idea, but yeah, especially because think... they showed us, um, like you know how easily, like the, the first order don't just you know, they don't empire it. They don't go thank you for the information and then kill people. Like D- with DJ, for example, he was like, yeah, all right, you've arrested me, but here's the information on where their ships are. Can I have money? Yeah, we'll give you money. All right, bye. Like it would have been interesting to see if there was a general who would who decided, yeah, this is pointless. Like we can't win. So, fuck it. I'm going to help them out, and they're going to pay me off. I think you get that at the end with the fact that none of their allies turn up. That is depressing, isn't it? Yeah. That's freaking that, depressing. That, that, is, that is where you get that moment. <laughs> none the of thing the allies, that I liked none about... None of the allies turn up, but somehow a little kid finds out what happened. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the story spreads. But that, that quick? Was, was Poe Dameron Snapchatting it the whole time? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. But also, that kid's... That, that, He's that leaving kid's... a distraction week so we can escape. <clears throat> Plus, he looks really good with this filter. But also, that kid's full sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Space magic. Space magic. Um, speaking of, I did like the fact that the Force, again, is just space magic now. Yeah. That's like, what it's there, there's an been. idea that DNA is a factor, but it's, it's, it's space magic. Yeah. It, it is, once again, the thing between all things. Um. And I think the scene where Ray described how she felt, you know, when Luke was just like, you know, like, search your feelings. Um, that was really good. And it was a great explanation as to what the Force should be, not what the prequels decided it was. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Which was nice. Um, that being said, I... Oh, we'll get to Luke later. I think he's the main course. Because um, that was interesting. Uh I like the I like the projected talks with Ray and, and Kyle, like we were saying. Yeah. I think that was quite thought cool. that stuff was really cool. Yeah, and, and, it, sh- and also it shows they're... that they are linked because the force needs a balance. Yeah, and here we have 
someone who's looking for answers and, and you know who's who's willing to to help people and 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 be compassionate and she wants to know more about this thing she has and then there's the other guy who is a Darth Vader fanboy who thinks he knows exactly what he is but he's pissed off that no one takes him seriously and he's full of rage and hatred so it's like there is a balance there that makes sense so but he is also conflicted at the same time yeah which and, and I wish we'd seen a bit more conflicted um stuff with Ray because that would have that would have almost set up oh shit like the force is is balanced but like it's because neither of them really know what what they're doing like I I almost yeah. wish she joined him do you know what I mean like maybe not from a point of view of yeah let's rule the galaxy from a point of view of like okay maybe this is the way we settle everything we yeah. bring peace maybe I can maybe I can convince him not to murder people but at the same time like maybe we need a clean slate I I almost wish that was where the story ended for her in this yeah. film. And I think I think Kylo Ren does want a clean slate. And yeah. it's, it's that thing of like, now nah, fuck this. I don't like any of this. Let's start from scratch. I want to burn it all down. Well, that's, that's, that's his problem though, isn't it? Yeah. He wants to literally burn it all down, start again. Yeah. Whereas I think Ray could be the one to steer him more toward like, no, let's baby steps, mate, baby steps. Let's, let's do this. Let's do that. Um, but I did, I did enjoy their scenes together a lot. Yeah, uh, I ju- especially I, when they get when they, yeah, uh, in in the uh, in the throne room, like against, everything against in Snoke's throne room. Victorian Imperial Guard is it's just jaw dropping, mm. like and all that stuff, and just the way and the way that Snoke is just dispatched out of nowhere. Yeah, and, the, the boldness of that discarded. moment is great. Like that's really yeah. cool. But it's, I do, I do, I oh, it's one of the, it's one of my bugbears. I, I want to, I want to know who he is. I don't mean like in a, is he Darth Plague? I don't give a fuck about all that theory bullshit. I just would like to know. So who is this guy, and why in this world of you know the Force being sort of forgotten and neglected, why is this guy like this? Like what's what's Christopher the there? I just, I just, just. Just a little bit, just so we know. Because here's the thing: he, he mocks Kylo Ren for trying to be Darth Vader. Yep. But Snoke, Snoke's trying to be the Emperor. Ah, here's the thing, right? <clears throat> Aye. Before the prequels came out, Yarb. What did you know about the Emperor? Uh, dark evil space wizard in charge of Nazis. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, good point. But I don't know. <laughs> That's. I mean, to me, that is very true. But that I think that works. Oh, that that principle worked definitely in the Force Awakens. I think just by now I'm like, so why is he stoking the fight? Like who, who it did? Who it did? Because he runs the, he runs the first you know order. I mean? like, like I, I get I get what you mean. I totally get what you mean, and I, and I agree. Like the Emperor is a faceless villain in the original. You didn't even films. Know, you didn't even know his name until the prequels. Oh, I couldn't give a fuck about his name. To me, he's still the Emperor. Like yeah, he's, 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 never, after the he's never named on screen as Palpatine. I mean, yeah. he's in, in like in the scripts and stuff, but on screen, he's never named as Palpatine until the prequels. But do you know? Do you know? I think. Do you know? I think it is that makes me want to know more about it. The fact that it's... most people have spent two years obsessing. Oh about no, it. fuck that! I don't watch any of that bullshit. No, it's. I know, but it's, that... it's kind of seeped into people's consciousness. I think. Oh no! no well, well, here's the thing. I I didn't. I you know I, I wasn't like oh I wonder this that and the other about him really until like the trailer for this movie came out and I was like, oh, oh, of course. oh we're going to have Snoke. Oh, cool. I wonder where this is going to go then. Um, and I think it was because of just how much, how invested he was in everything. Like, how much he was loving it. Loving watching the conflict. Which, again, similar to the Emperor in, in Return of the Jedi, but, but his, his, his purpose in that scene is to reinforce that this is the dude that corrupted your dad. All right, Luke. What are you gonna do now? Like, are you gonna kill yeah. this bloke? Are you gonna, um, you know, he he was he was he he was space Hitler. Like, he was the dartboard. Do you know what I mean? It's like he's yeah, gonna, yeah. he's gonna go down one way or another. It's it's about what Luke chooses to do. That's what that that is what's important and what's got me invested. Um, with this one, the fact that he set up trying to get them, like he's apparently the one who's pushed them to to communicate and all this. It's like. Right, why? I know you wanted physically because you wanted to get Ray in the control room, but you seem powerful enough that you could probably just like figure out where she is and force pull her off the planet. 
and, and choke her in space. But, <laughs> but you know, doesn't, that doesn't kill doesn't, people anymore. He doesn't want to kill her. No, he wants, he wants to, to possibly turn he her. Wants but, to, he wants to turn her. But similarly, like, what's his stake in it? I, don't, I, know, I know it is... It, I think it's, it's a bit of a conflict, really, because this movie does such a good job of pushing away from the Saturday morning cartoon narrative of this series... But Snoke's yeah. entire role is Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, but I think the where it where that where it does that final push is mm. where it kills Snoke. Yeah, that's okay. where it does. It is doing that Saturday morning cartoon thing, and then it goes. Actually, no, we're going to move beyond that. Yeah. Boom! Snoke's dead. Yeah. What's his motivation? Doesn't matter. He's dead. I. It was just. It was a Saturday morning cartoon villain. That's his motivation. <laughs> his motivation is to conquer for the sake of conquering. But he's gone now. We don't need to worry about him. He's been usurped by someone more complex. And and yeah. potentially more dangerous. Um, did you notice a lack of stormtroopers in this movie? Yeah, there weren't many stormtroopers. They were barely in, this movie. in it, were they? It was really but, weird because because obviously the way the movie ends, I was like, oh shit, Kylo in charge of the first order. This is going to be, and I agree that this is going to be really cool to see what happens. Like a petulant child at the head of a Nazi, you know, army. Like what's going to happen? But I was also like, oh shit, they've barely been in this. Um, although one stormtrooper. Um, Elite stormtrooper, as it were, gets the spotlight. The fuck <laughs> happened there? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. <clears throat> I want Fazma to come back in the next one, improbably, like somehow, and do nothing again. Because I fucking love it. Phasma I love what build up she gets you... and then just doesn't do anything. It's brilliant. Phasma's existence has, to me, validated the obsession with Boba Fett. Yeah. Because Boba Fett and Phasma. Both have in common the fact they barely do shit, but people have really adopted them as, like, you know, figureheads, as iconic because imagery they of these look movies. cool as because they look fuck. Cool. and that is completely true. But I think and with in, this movie, in the lead up to this film, in the lead up to this film, Phasma got a novel and a comic series. Yeah, which is why it's more hilarious and kind of pathetic at the same time. That out of the two of them. I think Boba being hit by a blind Harrison Ford and being eaten by a, a pussy in the desert is still less embarrassing than what happens to Phasma. Because with Phasma, it's, there's such a build-up. And then fuck all! Again! Two I movies! It. I love it. Two I movies! I love it so much. It's so dumb. And I, it just makes me kind of... It adds an extra layer of comedy to the, to the publicity. Because... Yeah. Gwendolyn Christie, like, you know, arguably a fantastic actor. Um, And, you know, I I completely agree with her statements on it's cool for young girls to see female characters who are not in the obvious roles. I completely agree with that. But it also makes me piss myself laughing every time she does an interview. She's like, I think it's a really good, she's a really good role model. And she's, you know, she's a very iconic character. It's like Gwendolyn, love, um, I think you're brilliant, but... uh, Maybe maybe hold back on that because you, you don't do fucking you don't do shit in these movies. Like, yeah, but she looks cool though. It's so weird. It's so odd to me. Um, Talk about man. female role models. Yes, Carrie Fisher. Oh, this movie made me sad several times. This so, she is so good in this. She's great. She's absolutely brilliant. Um. Apart from her Chris Reeve impression, but um... I love that. I love this Mary Poppins <laughs> moment. It's Mary so Poppins. great. Oh, when you put it that way, it sounds slightly less weird. Yeah, it sounds kind of sweet. It's that, so it, good. It was odd because I know it sounds weird. I and, and I've seen this in a couple of the reviews since watching as well. A few people have mentioned. I think um, I think what's it? Uh, uh, Chris Stuckman mentioned it, and, and the Red Letter Media guys mentioned it and stuff. And and I, I felt this way when I watched it. Um. When she was killed, unquote, my first thought was, oh God, is that it? And then I was like, oh, well, yeah, okay. Like, you know, Carrie Fisher, unfortunately, has to be written out of the story um, in some way. And maybe this is how they've chosen to do it. And it felt odd in the moment it happened. But similarly, like, it was shocking and... Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. And I kind of, like, I kind of, in that two minutes, made peace with the idea that that's the end of Leia. Because it was, it was scary and, and it, sudden. Yeah, it was. 
It was. So then when she suddenly force woke up and um, yonduded her way in reverse back to the ship, um, I didn't know how to feel. I think the visual was kind of cheesy, but at the same time, because we're invested in that character, it was, it was sort of like, oh, yes, yes, yes. But it, it's, I think I'd need a second viewing to decide how I really feel about that. But you dug it. You, you, you just, I, I really did. She it. just, did yeah. she just need an umbrella with a parrot handle? And oh, you would, you yeah, would have been please. No, it's just, it's she, just she joins the of... Yondu group of brand new Mary Poppins for Disney. <laughs> Gen- General oh, Leia like and that. Yondu are the new Mary Poppins. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, no, I just... It was really neat to see Leia as a leader and also re- a reminder that she's... She's not a Jedi, but she's powerful enough in her own way. Yeah. She's still a Skywalker. Whether she's using it or not, it's in there somewhere. Yeah. And also... She, also, the, the speed of Skywalker isn't as important as it used to be as this film hammers home. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, and, pa- and I think part of that is her sort of grooming Poe as the next resistance leader. Mm, um, yeah. Cause it's, it's not because he's, it's not because he's, he's inherently more powerful. He's just, he's good. He's just good at what he does. Yeah. She can see, the, he's good, got she it can in see the good in him and she wants to yeah. make sure that like he, he, he wields his responsibilities correctly. Because that is the problem with him, is that he's, he is irresponsible and he is reckless and he puts other people in danger. And as a leader, you can't afford to do that without the best reasons you have. And I think, um, yeah, I think the whole stuff, all the stuff with Holdo not trusting him, it feeds into that quite nicely. Uh, I just really love, I just really love Leia in this in this movie, and also the fact that she does get to say a goodbye to Luke. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we we at least get oh. a tiny bit of crossover with our big three now that that feels finite. Um, yeah. Because I saw a tweet this week that made me smile where, where someone basically said, it's a massive shame that um, Harrison wasn't in this movie just so we could watch an elderly Han ruffle the hair of an elderly Luke and call him Kid. Even though it's really weird because they're both old as fuck. Yep. <laughs> and that, but that's something that Luke gets to whap out on Kylo, which is brilliant. Yeah. I, oh, man. <laughs> that's just part of the reason why I'm sad of what happened next. Because I kind of like the idea of maybe that being his, right, I'm fucking coming for you now moment. But maybe he will, just in a blue shiny way. Um, yeah. Speaking of blue shiny... um. I don't care what anybody says. I'm fucking delighted that that puppet was covered in a blue glow. I'm oh, I love it. Was it. A puppet. I'm I love the puppet. It was I love the puppet so much. I'm gonna get my. I'm nit- so happy I'm gonna to get see my, the puppet. I'm gonna get my Yoda nitpick out of the way because it does tie into my biggest problem in the movie. But it's it's incidental because I just want to talk about how wonderful that moment was. Um, Fair enough. Why is Yoda acting like fake Yoda? Like he's acting like Yoda does before he reveals he's you know Yoda. Um, but at the same time, maybe Yoda always did have a sense of humour. He just was serious when the time called for it. So yeah, I, think I can, I can kind of forgive it of humor, yeah. because it just made me smile. <laughs> Especially when he was like, read them, did you? Page turners, they were not. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, he'd know. I mean, it's true. It's true. Because th- th- they don't call it that in the movies, do they? But they were the, they were the journals of the wills, weren't they? They were, it I, was I, them. I would imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. Because orig- I think Luke referred to them as the original Jedi texts. Yeah. Um, and we know the journals, of the wills and like the, the trees and stuff are very important. The mythology in both legends and in the, the, new, the current continuity. Yeah. Um, I mean, even the journal, the, the keepers, of the wills and everything's part of Rogue One. It's almost like, now that it seems like that was done so that the cinema at large, you know, cinematic public yeah. at large would be made aware that there are ancient traditions of the Jedi and they're, they're in different places and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Um, but seeing Yoda was sweet, man. Like, oh, <laughs> but a lot of people going, why wasn't it Obi-Wan? It's like, because that wouldn't be physically plausible in real life to do. Um, yeah, I mean, you could get you McGregor. But, but that wouldn't make any weird. sense. Yeah, because yeah. Luke would be yeah. like, who the fuck are you? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you and McGregor is approaching that sort of. You with a bit of makeup, he could do the Alec Guinness look because he's what, and he's in his mid forties now. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't. I, I still think save save McGregor for a a one off Obi Obi Wan story set 
during his exile. Like, yeah. that'd be cool. Um, so we could have a halfway house version. Um, but yeah, it was just sweet to see Yoda and it, 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 it's one of those where I know that the majority of why that was effective was simply nostalgia glands, but I kind of don't mind because we had three films, well, we had one film that is now changed so that it's not the same. But yeah. we had three films where we were given, we were force fed this CGI toddler in a gremlin costume <laughs> who's just boring and quiet and just, ugh. And then leaps around in an unfathomable way that didn't feel right at all. No, no, it uh, didn't. So, so to finally see him hobbling around again, talking like Frank Oz, puppet Yoda, it was like, okay, this makes me happy. There's little chubby cheeks. <laughs> his chubby cheeks and is, 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 is his receding hairline. Let's, let's get into Luke. Dirty bastard. Let's get into, let's get into, let's get into Luke. Yeah. I love Mark Hamill in this movie. I think he's incredible. Like one of the best performances I've ever heard or seen from him. I just think he's brilliant. I agree in that I love Mark Hamill's performance. Uh, and he definitely took the chance to be like, like considering he is essentially, he's a character actor who a couple of yeah. times has played lead. Um, he obviously took this chance to be like, right, I'm the lead again, but I'm going to approach it through a character actor perspective. And, yeah. And he, he absolutely nails it. Like he gets to be, he gets to be Alec Guinness this time. Yeah. To, Which to, is kind to, of what to, I to expected. Daisy Ridley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And that's, that is also, and I, 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 I like his performance a lot. I'm going to put a bullet point in it there for now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you don't like where they go with him, do you? I really don't. And, and I can see the merits of it. I genuinely can. Um, because again, it is about throwing you off balance as, as, a, as a, a fan of the story. Like, you're not expecting Luke to be um, a shut-in. To, be, to no. be a hermit who's rejected the Force and decided, Nope! Fuck it! You're not expecting him to have had that moment of weakness during his no. Twilight years... And nearly kill his own nephew, like you. You know, there's there is stuff that is is a very bold choice, and I do agree is a very uh, a brave thing for them to do. And and though I don't like all of it, like I still am like I'm glad that they at least committed to stuff like that. Um, and see, but this is the guy who <laughs> this is the guy who was a decent pilot, but like wouldn't hesitate to suddenly join an X-Wing force on a suicide mission to blow up the Death Star despite not really knowing what he's doing. But he didn't yeah, hesitate. When he, this when is, he was this is 40 guy, years younger. Yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. That's true. But this is also a guy who, when he reached his, his you know, the beginning of his proper maturity and the, his Jedi training had begun proper and we, we saw him suddenly become a lot more stoic and reserved because he was tapping into the force and he was thinking before he you know drew his sword and everything the guy who went alone essentially unarmed into the heart of the third reich's death machine to face off against the ultimate evil not because he he was going to kill him but because he was going to turn to the ultimate evil's right hand man the second most evil man in the galaxy and appeal to him with love like Luke is an inherently very good guy. Um, I, I think he was at one point, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I, at least for the majority of his life. And and that's why I found it really hard to swallow his his turn. Now, I, I get it in the, mo- in the movie. I completely get it. But it, it, it really did. Like, I wasn't expecting him to be the, the Legends continuity, you know, um, o- seriously OP. Yeah, so and I, 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 I think wasn't, I wasn't expecting were, I that. Think... Yeah. I think that's where some people's disappointment comes from, and that yeah. if you, if people were expecting that, then well, those people got a glimpse of it. Like they gave us a version of that yeah. for the climax, yeah. so so they can't complain that it wasn't there because hey, there he is, being a badass, sort hey, of. It seems in a way that guy. Um, it's that guy from my movie. That, that guy. guy. He's um, that guy. He's um, tinsel on a tree. But um, I just I I found it so 
odd to me because I I was I was the freak kid of the nineties uh, in terms of like you know my schoolmates who who liked Star Wars. I was the freak kid who liked Luke instead of Han, and I think it's because even from a young age I I got the wide-eyed optimism, but I understood that he was a, you know, inherently he was a good person who still had a lot to learn, but, you know, he would always do the right thing. And, and his final lesson for that, really, is when he goes to Cloud City uh, against Yoda's warnings and everything fucks up. Yeah. and Which but is, why, see, which is I... why in Jedi he's so like, oh, don't worry, I got this. Because he's approaching the, like, he'd learned that lesson. And in this, it almost felt like he'd unlearned the lesson. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? To see, I don't the think purpose of this story. I don't think he's unlearned the lesson. I think he's just this thirty years that we haven't seen of Luke, and what we know about that thirty years is that he tried to start, <clears throat> he tried to rebuild something that had been destroyed, and failed miserably. And not only that, got. Got at least half of his students killed, and lost his nephew. He failed his sister and his best friend, and he lost his nephew. Mm. And that's that sort of idea. But I think it's that sort of idealism and goodness in him that will that will then make him go. You know what? I'm dangerous. This whole thing is dangerous. I need to just step away and fade away that I can't do any more damage to anyone or anything. Which which brings me to my my biggest problem with this as part of this trilogy. Uh, and my biggest problem with Luke's story in terms of the trilogy. Uh, the plot of last movie was to locate the two pieces of a map to Luke Skywalker, which he had put out there in case he, like, against all odds, he was desperately needed. Like, if you really need him, work for it, find me, come get me. And Ray does that. The Resistance do that. And then they arrive, and he's like, fuck off. It's like, yeah, mate, he mate make, you did... left the breadcrumbs. <laughs> did he, though? Yeah, because he left it in R2. Hmm. It, 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 he put it out there. That, that's the implication is um, in, the, in Force Awakens, is that he's left, he has left a calling card. If you really, really need me, you know how to find me but you've got to work for it. And, and I've, I've done it this way so that the wrong hands can't get hold of it. You lot know. Do you know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the implication is the only reason the First Order know about the map to Skywalker is because of Kylo. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like it's, so, so, uh, which, which is the family connection. So it, it's, that, that, that was my biggest bugbear in terms of this. Again, like as its own movie on its own, I completely got the decisions they were making. Yeah. But following on from Force Awakens, it just felt, Odd. See, I ju- I just figured that they'd grabbed his navigational data or whatever, or that he'd used R two to navigate and then shut R two down to hide it to cover his tracks. So why would there be another piece out there on its own somewhere? Well, that's the comes from La Santeca, doesn't it? Who we don't know about, much about. I might have to have a look at the um, Poe Dameron comic to see if there's an answer in there because that's all about Poe going after La Santeca. Mm, but I don't know. Um, but again, like he's. Like he's got it, and he he again Max von Sydow. He, he seems, you know, like his character's part of a whole. Don't worry, like you can find him. Here you go. Like this is this is this was the plan. Yeah, but if and, he if if he's been if he's been in hiding for so long, I think I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that he's sort of. Well, he says he came become there to embittered. Die. Yeah, exactly. But he didn't come there to die. He came there to get away from everyone, so he couldn't do any more damage. That's what. Yeah, but that. But if you need me... That's the same thing. If you need me... No, 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 but I mean, like, but if you need me, I'm here. Yeah, but does he ever say that explicitly? Well, no, because he didn't say a damn word in the last film. Exactly. <laughs> Other people have made that assumption about say, him. He doesn't say a damn word, and then he, he becomes sassy Luke Skywalker. Other other people have made <laughs> that assumption about him. Throwing lightsabers and sucking titties. Other people have made that assumption <laughs> about him, but he has never turned around and said, oh, I came here, but if you need me, you want me. Oh he just says, God. I came here to die. Oh my it God. comes out of here. That's what he says. No, Matt, no. He came here to throw lightsabers and suck some titties. And he's all out of lightsabers. So I, I love the win. He's going to milk them titties. Giraffe cow thing. It's just it's just a sort of oddness you'd get in, like, Star, it's did just, it, it's did Star it, Wars did oddness. Did teats it's have to just be breasts? Like, it was just yes. four breasts. Yes, they it was did. so weird. Did. Yes, um, they did. 
It's great. But I, I for for all my for all my hang ups and and and. I, 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 hang-ups is wrong. I, I think they are legitimate criticisms, but at the same time, it's fiction. We're all going to die one day. Fuck it. Um, but like for all of my for all my grievances, I think Hamill did a damn fine job. Um, I also think he didn't like the story either because uh, there's a no, lot of those no. interviews that circulate. He's this been year. quite yeah. He's been quite open about saying that he didn't agree with the direction that character was going in. Yeah, and and I've noticed since the press has begun for the film proper, he's not referenced it at all. Like he's, he's not referred to Luke's journey. He's more talked about playing the role and, yeah, work, and yeah. working with everyone else. So I, I do wonder if, because Hamill's a very candid guy. I oh, do, yeah. I do wonder if at some point in the next few years we're going to get a, okay, so here's my beef with it. Sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? I, it'd be interesting yeah, that wouldn't that surprise comes. me. The same way that Peter Capaldi seems to have gone very quiet all of a sudden. I wonder if we're on, we're due a, um, so here's why Doctor Who's a bag of shit. Talk hey! At some point. Um, definitely, definitely. But yeah, but I, I admire I admire Hamill's performance, and I think yeah, I think his, he's co- his confidence is wonderful. Is weirdly my favourite moment of his that wasn't a dramatic um, moment was just his little wink at three PO. Yeah, it's, it's like, wonderful because you know that Luke Skywalker is like if I talk to him, he's never going to fucking shut up. <laughs> so I'm just yeah. going to wink at him. He's never going to stop. Where's three PO's red arm? Matt? He got it fixed. It's Did fine. he though? Did he though? Cause, yes, because that, that's a quick fix. Well, there's no time at all. It doesn't matter. It's fine. There's no um, time at all. It was like a week later. Like, I thought, it's I fine. Work. Yeah, it's best. It just, just spray painted it. Um, uh, how did you feel? Oh, no, go on. No, go on. There's, there's, there's some I'm, I'm curious to find out, but I'll, I'll, I'll bullet point, bullet point. Go on, go on. Can we talk about Ma, um, Ma? Luke's exit? Luke's just wonderful, perfect ending. Mm, you can talk about that if you like. Uh, uh, <laughs> just the way you talked earlier about it, I was like, I can't, I'm just one man, I can't stand up against the entire First Order. Mm. It's like, and then he just does, goes and does just that. Well, does he? Yes, he does. <laughs> he does As an astral the, projection. He does. Which he, is brilliant. He does thematically. I agree. It, it's he, the he, perfect. But it's also the perfect way to show exactly how powerful he is. Yeah, he, he he does it essentially to buy everyone some time and fuck with Ben. Yeah, like, and I, I, but that that weirds me out because I'm like, why would you goad him? Like, you know how dangerous he is. You nearly tried to kill him in his sleep. Because like, why would you? That's what because he knows that he's become so petty, yeah. and also he knows that mm-hmm. if he. The the angry he makes Kylo, particularly at the start, the less likely he is to realise that this isn't the real Luke. And then he falls into his trap. That his trap being, force the, Kylo out here so ma- everyone can Matrix fuck off. Traps. <laughs> Matrix choreography, that was his trap all along. It's just... I... I it, it's It's such a contrast of like the sheer power and brutality of Kylo. The sheer power and brutality of the dark side. The dark side. To to Luke's sort of like gentleman. It's basically one big mind trick. Mm, It's a big old mind fuck. But at the end of the day, it's more powerful. And that's the, that's the interesting thing about, about Luke and the way he is in this movie. And the, the, where his power lies, his power doesn't lie in the, in the flippy prequels, lightsaber bullshit. Oh yeah, no, fuck, fuck that up for a bag of he's, tits. Yeah, that's not... He's, mm. he's strong in the force and all that entails, which means he can do things that no one else can do. Even if it kills him, which it ultimately does. And in, and, and I just love that beautiful moment of the of the twin sons as he as he fades away. It's, it's I think it's just such a perfect end to this character. And I get that people are uh, disappointed that we didn't see more of him at his peak. But I think it's a, an amazing send off, especially that he gets to say goodbye to Leia, and also with the implication that we're going to see a new Jedi Order rise, but it's going to be better this time because it's not they're not going to hold on to the dogma of the past because Luke learnt that lesson for everyone, and that the legacy that he'll leave is is don't try and do what I did, forge your own way, mm-hmm. and I just I think that's a really beautiful message to this film, and I. And I just think it was a great send off for the character, and I'm sure we'll see him again as a Force ghost if we want to. But um... I, I kind of hope so. Just, just to, I think, the, the, because of the themes this film sets up, it it would be kind of nice to 
tie everything up in a bow considering the next is the final um and and i feel that his his sacrifice play is a big part of their new direction so even if it's just a jedi-esque appears at the end and gives a little nod like just do you know what i mean it's like a there you go you did it right when i did it wrong just winks at 3PO all the time. Yeah, just comes back, winks at 3PO. 3PO is like, is, is anyone else seeing this? <laughs> every, time out, I, every time I go down that corridor, Master Luke appears and winks at me. Is no one else out, seeing this? And they think 3PO is going senile, so they shut him down. <laughs> turns out you can mind trick a droid. Um, <laughs> yes, go on, say what you wanted to say. How did you feel about the, probably... How did you feel about the comedy in this movie? Loved it. Really? Star Wars has always been funny, and I, anyone who says otherwise had never seen the films. Did you not find any other any of the gags a bit hmm? Because I found a, yeah, so I, I found a couple a bit hmm. Yeah, a couple of them didn't quite land, but not 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 in any way that I found particularly egregious. Yeah, I, I don't I don't um, understand the big criticism of the comedy as a whole because you're right, Star Wars has always been funny. We even were, Empire's funny. An Empire is dark, but Empire is also funny. All the Yoda shit is hilarious when he first yeah. shows up and everything. Yeah, and and. Even just like there's a lot of comedy in the originals that is sort of not a you know piss yourself laughing funny, but is that kind yeah. of oh kind of funny? They're wi- like the whole, particularly. We would be honoured if you would join us for dinner. Like if you don't smirk at that, like you didn't side. Yeah, em- Empire is. It's witty. Yes. Like so. So, yeah, so I, I, think, I think there were some moments in this that were a bit far. Like. I've got a dark sense of humour, but even watching the Porg family stare at Chewie as he's about to oh, eat their dead family member. I a, loved that so it, much. I, just, it, 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 I, think, I think it just disrupted the vibe of the scene for me, more than not being funny. I um, thought that was brilliant. Porgs. Um, bit cynical, really, weren't they, in the end? Uh, they gave us a couple of nice moments, but they were so blatantly just toys. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that, though. I mean, I don't think they got in the way. I thought they were cool little things, cool little creatures. Sell toys to kids. I think I'd, I think I'd feel less. Don't... I think I'd feel less gross had they um, waited till the movie's release to be like, "Oh, here's a bunch of pog stuff. If you like them, here they are." Oh no, no, no! Because Disney are not stupid. They know that that stuff will sell, and it didn't. Like I say, I did. It didn't interfere with this with the stories. Really, it was just nice. It was, if anything, it was a nice little bit of world building to give. The, the planet Luke was on a bit more character. Yeah. Um, in the same way that the, the, the foxes at the end, the crystal foxes on the salt planet, I thought was were really cool. They were... I, um, I, saw, I saw footage of the practical effects used for them. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know if any of the practical ones featured in shot. I don't know. They looked gorgeous regardless. It was a fucking great design. Um, but that that stuff's just, you know, that's world building for this, for this universe. And if it happens to be cute and merchandisable, then all the... Mo- yeah, Disney made more money. But it didn't... Nothing about it bothered me. Like, it, I don't think it was particularly, particularly uh, problematic. Uh, the fuck with the llama dog things <laughs> on Canto Bite. I get what they're going for. Yeah, but it it, um, it it almost felt like the movie derailed briefly to give us a message. Yeah, um, and it could have been done a bit more elegantly, but it gives us a nice, you know, a, a decent action sequence in uh, that helps. Give a bit more zest to that particular part of the movie, which is if you can pick a low point in the movie, it's the Canto Bite stuff. Yeah. But it, like I say, it's necessary because of where Finn and Rosie's characters go. That they ha- that stuff has to happen. Um, Did you get the vibe when she kissed him at the end that he was like, "Oh, oh, is that what this is?" Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like he did not see that coming, and I don't think he's into it. Yeah. But so there's hope. Again, for, we'll see where that goes. Finn and Poe, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Whilst Rose watches from the cupboard. Um, right, we've so... uh, we've got so both our both our emails are quite into Star Wars. So do you want to jump straight into them? Let's or really well do it, good sir, the... kind sir. Okay, <laughs> um, so these are both quite in depth. So uh, the spoiler warning remains um, for these emails because they're going to go into Last Jedi and talk about plot points and stuff. So lo, lo, you have lo, been warned. Lo, 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 lo. Um. This first one comes in from... <laughs> um, Tom Monte comes in and says, Dear Chris and Matt. Hello. Uh, Tom after watching... Monte. Hello, Tom Monte. I'm not doing the voice. It's too long. Um, <laughs> like after watching... 
I hate you so much. Um, after watching episode 8 on its midnight release and having let my opinions brew, I can now safely say that despite the rave reviews I've seen anywhere, everywhere, The Last Jedi has left me unimpressed. Oh. Oh. Um, whilst I had some fun, e.g. when the rebel ship went light speeding into Snoke's ship, that, that was, was incredible. fucking amazing moment. Yeah, that, that was, was amazing freaking moment. amazing. Um, this film felt extremely rushed. The editing was choppy and the dialogue felt off. The endless jokes felt very out of place at times. Um, I get you're not liking the humour, but I don't think I can agree with you on the editing being choppy. There was, I think there was a couple of scenes, I know what he means, there's a couple of scenes where it, it's cut very oddly. Like when um, Luke finds out that Han's no longer there. Yeah. He sort of gives him like a second on camera and then cuts to Ray like looking at him. And then, do you know what I mean? It was like, uh, what? So I, eh, I, I, I kind of get it. I don't think it was consistently choppy, but there were a couple moments that stood out. I, did, I, I didn't get it from first viewing, so I'll keep an eye out for some rough moments when I see it again, because I will see it again. Um, <laughs> the endless, uh, there was too many subplots happening at once and so much plot happening within those subplots, I almost lost the plot, if you see what I did there. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah, like I say, I think it gets a bit saggy in the Canto Bite stuff, but all that stuff is necessary for for, um, for Finn at least, yeah, for yeah. for Finn, yeah. um, and for Poe to a degree as well, because him sending that that mission out pretty much is is what ends up dooming the 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 fleet. Because if they hadn't gone on that mission, they wouldn't have picked up DJ. If they hadn't have picked up DJ, he wouldn't have told them where the ships are. If he hadn't have told them where the ships are, they wouldn't have noticed the transports. Bless you. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> Snoke left me wanting more. That bit where he used his force lightning on Kylo left me pretty pumped about seeing a full-on duel between him and someone else later on in the film or in episode 9. But no, they decide to kill him off. Whilst I appreciate it being a bold move, what's the point in all the mystery behind his character if he just gets killed off before we see him in action? What a waste. Again, the mystery is completely made up by the fans. Like, they don't they don't have a whole, oh, who is Snoke thing in the film? That is all people watching it going, who's this dude? So the film doesn't owe you any answers. Um, but we will take them. Yeah. Grab arms, my friends. <laughs> You'll probably get some expanded universe stuff that gives out his origin. I if... don't want to pay extra. <laughs> but like, it, but again, it's not important. It doesn't matter who he is. It, it's just an evil. It's an evil space wizard, same as the emperor was in the original trilogy before the prequels came uh, along. He's an evil, evil space wizard. wizard. Um. So does that leave us with? <laughs> so does that leave us with Kylo Ren as our big baddie for Episode Nine? Am I the only one underwhelmed by this? Whilst I liked him in TFA, he's too inconsistent to be the main villain. He seems so morally conflicted in this plot that it felt unauthentic. The fact that he went from supporting Snoke to supporting Rey to betraying Snoke and then becoming Rey's enemy again all in the space of a few hours didn't work for me. I don't think you've read that quite right. I kind of, I kind of get where you're coming from, Tom. But um, similarly, like the the thing I did admire about this film was 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 what Matt said earlier is about that it throws your conceptions under the bus a bit, your preconceptions under the bus, and yeah. it breaks away from the good versus evil narrative. So, though I am also a bit like, oh. Uh, the first, first order don't really have an iron fist behind them anymore. I'm like, but it'll be interesting to see a pet, a petty teenager at the helm as well. So yeah, yeah. I think it's less about Kylo Ren being the big bad and more what the hell is Kylo Ren going to do now that he's apparently the big bad. Yeah. So, um, um, so years. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't think he went. I don't think he was ever supporting Ray as much as he was looking to join up with her. Yeah, he was offering her an alternative. Like, I don't think it was ever. I don't think there was ever a, a moment when he was going to join the resistance. But he do, he he wants to join up with Ray and 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 do something new, and he and he does resent Snoke. Like clearly after that first scene with him where he smashes the helmet, Snoke bullies him. Snoke has bullied him into being Kylo Ren, and Snoke bullies him even further out of it. So it's not like he has any love for Snoke. No, um, uh, Snoke's Snoke, just a boss. Snoke, Snoke to him was someone who he, he put his. Um, his faith and his trust in him. Yeah. But also, he probably only did that in the first place because A, Snoke seducing him to the dark side, and B, isn't this like my grandfather with the Emperor? I want to do yeah. this too. So Yeah. yeah. And and I think and I think Snoke kind of seals his own fate with Kylo by baiting him. Yeah. So, you know, he deserves it. The crunkly old space. Woman. I love it when he sits um, there and reads the stage directions aloud. 
Yeah! <laughs> Oh, I love it. Um, don't get me started on that Leia Superman moment. <laughs> love it. Love I, it. I, I have I have now slightly less of a problem with it since you described it as a Mary Poppins moment for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's the new empire. Like, you know, people have grown up loving the Star Wars movies, always try and put a, a, someone loses a hand in the second act thing. It, like the Marvel yeah. films, for example. Uh, but now for it a seems film... that all these movies are trying to have a Mary Poppins moment. <laughs> Well, why not? Uh, for a film that I had very high expectations for, I am very disappointed. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Tom, because, yeah, trust me, I've, I've been in that position and it fucking sucks when you're looking forward to a film that much and it doesn't live up to your expectations. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Chris, I've seen your initial response on Twitter and I've gathered you were let down. Correct me if I'm wrong. What plot point were you most disappointed by? I think we've touched on that. Yeah. Um, Matt, that question also applies to you if you were disappointed at all. I was not disappointed. Uh, was there, was the... there anything in the movie, Jack Curiosity, was there anything in the movie that you, you were a bit like, oh. Was it was it sort of the, the I don't know, the, the, the kind of the, the, the length of the Canto Bite stuff, maybe? Uh, yeah, like I say, that's the, that's the only really thing that stuck, that stuck stood out to me as, as sort of baggy was the, was the Canto Bite stuff, but it all comes, to, it pays off. So by the end of the movie, I'm like, okay, well, I get why they did that, but it was a little baggy. But in terms of, I wasn't really particularly disappointed for anything because... Not enough caretakers. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't really go in looking for... I think what a lot of people have gone into this movie for is looking for answers to mysteries that aren't really there. And that's kind of... That's partly the fault of J.J. Abrams because that's the way he makes films. J.J. Abrams. Yeah, he talk, he talk, he talk, he's quite openly talked about the mystery box and setting up mysteries with no intention of paying them off. Um, and I think you can read Force Awakens as setting them up in that way, although I don't think it does. Um, I think the, ra- I think the race parents stuff. thing is a bit like that in Force Awakens. Yeah, um, a little bit. But, but, but you do that, get an answer but, to that. You get an answer why, to that. It's just not was, one you want. That's why. I, well, I was very. I was satisfied with the answer to it. Yeah, I'll be honest. Because I also, I think because cool. it's about the force, not about the Skywalkers at this point. Yeah, and I think that's what the movie. That's what this franchise needs to move it forward. Is to, is to come away from being. It's not all about this dynasty. It's not all about these same people that have to save the galaxy over and over again. Which was the trap that the old expanded universe fell into yeah. post Return of the Jedi. It was all about the Skywalker dynasty, and it, Han and Luke and Leia always came back with their ridiculous children to to save the galaxy once again. And it was just a bit. You no, know, they couldn't kill anyone off. They couldn't move forward. They eventually killed off Chewbacca, but. Um, you know, they couldn't kill off Han or Luke and it was just, it, yeah, I didn't, that's why I never really got into that stuff. I just wasn't that interested yeah, the, in reading the, the pre- more about pre- Luke and The Luke. prequels kind of reinforced all that by making them about Anakin Skywalker. Um, yeah. Because, yeah. Like, it, I, the, like, belated media does that wonderful series of like, what if episode one, two and three were good? And they, yeah. make, they make a really good point of the movie should have been about Obi-Wan. Yeah, and Anakin's story is just part of it that builds, and obviously by the third one, you're like, "Oh shit, this is where we're going yeah. with this." I think that probably would have been more interesting. Yeah, but hey, and, and that would have, I think that would have stopped people from thinking it's a family thing as well. Yeah, but um, um yeah. but I, I think I think it originally was a family thing, but I don't think you can stretch that out much further than it's already been stretched without it just breaking. If you'd have made them, if you'd have made the sequels twenty years ago, I think you could got away with it, but not anymore. Yeah, because you haven't got those actors around for that much longer, um, if at all. In this case, in the sad case of Carrie Fisher, which is the net, uh, which we're going to get to in a sec. Uh, on the flip side, what scene did you enjoy the most? I had the most fun when Ren and Kylo fought off Snoke's guards, despite the scene that led to that moment. I fucking love that fight scene. It is really, really good. Um, but also, I love the the Luke force projection stuff at the, at the climax of that movie. Like every, literally, once they get down onto Canto Bight, everything just goes into fucking turbo. Like every, even before that, everything from like the hyperspace ram. Oh, oh, from Holdo, when they go to Hold, the rebel base. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from 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 Holdo. Oh, it's crate, isn't it? From, when it gets crate. Yeah. From when from when Holdo rams the ship. Everything from the end of the movie is just fucking breakneck madness. It just goes bonkers. Like the whole. Like the whole the, the whole film is like this slow burn, like crawling chase that just leads up to that that explosion, which then just kicks everything into overdrive, and from there until the end of the movie, you, it just doesn't stop, and it's it's awesome, it's awesome. So yeah, I think the climax with the with the Luke 
Kylo fight is is probably the standout moment of that to me. I think, I, every... Yeah, I think for me it was that it was the it was the hyperspace ram for me. I think was the the standout moment. Yeah, because the whole cinema was as silent as the film was. It was just like, <gasps> yeah, it's <was> just stunning. <laughs> um. Uh, finally, throughout my viewing experience, I was expecting General Leia to bite the dust at any moment. Were you expecting the same? How do you feel about the fact that I probably have to kill her off in on off off screen in between eight and nine in order to resolve the lack of an actress issue? R.I.P. Carrie Fisher. Indeed. Um, yeah, I was expecting. I like like you were saying earlier. I I when she, when they blew up the bridge on the capital ship, I was expecting that to to be the end of Leia. But um, yeah. It's going to be interesting um, to see how they get around it now. Ooh. Yeah, I think. Well, I think there's going to be a time skip. Yeah. In between, which I think makes sense. We need we need yeah. time for for Kylo to settle as much as um, Kylo can settle into his new. And we we need time for the resistance to build up. Maybe for Ray to start finding other force sensitive individuals. Um. Yeah, I. I think it'll. I wouldn't surprise me. If the opening crawl of episode nine references the fact that Leia's passed away and it opens with a funeral, yeah, that really wouldn't surprise me. And I think it'd be a nice way to tribute to a nice way to tribute that character, because I think people have now come out and said um, that episode nine was also always supposed to be a Leia movie. Like it was Han, Luke, Leia was the was the plan for the the original trilogy for this new trilogy in handing over to the new cast mm-hmm. and which old cast member got focus um, and now we're not going to see that and that that's a real shame. Um, also, Carrie Fisher was brilliant and we we need more people like her in the world um, and we don't have we don't have that. Um, so Jacob. Jacob. Um, Jacob. Jacob. Uh, hello, big. <laughs> hello, big damn cockers. I have returned from the dead to talk about possibly my favourite Star Wars movie. By the way, this email will contain major spoilers for the Last Jedi. But if you haven't seen it already, what are you doing? listening to this tap? Go and watch it, you fools! I agree. <laughs> I, I don't understand all the hate this movie is getting. It, I, it is, at its core, a very good Star Wars movie. It feels like if Star Wars was made for the first time today, that's what it would be like. The only thing I really didn't like is Snoke's death. If he is really dead, I'm not 100% sure he really is dead. Dude, he's he's definitely dead. I mean, he even lost um, a hand. They carried on the tradition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> His hand uh, was just sat there on the chair. <laughs> if he is really dead, then he's a pointless character. Cool, but pointless. Again, disagree with you on that one. He isn't pointless. He serves his purpose perfectly. Um, that's the only criticism I have for the movie. By the time this podcast will be released, I will have seen it a second and a third time. I thought it was an excellent movie and adds a fantastic addition to the Star Wars unitard. Um, <laughs> I just realised something. Does The Last Jedi have a higher body count than Rogue One? Uh, I think The Force Awakens probably has the highest body count of any of them because it destroys a whole star system. Um <laughs> So let's let's leave it at that one, Blanket shall we? Dance. Yeah, uh, it was a surprise to me that Yoda's Force Ghost showed up. I expect Ben Kenobi to show up as well, but I guess that would have been too much of the kitchen sink. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So does Luke let himself go into the Force, or does he die of old age? I'm pretty sure he does a Ben Kenobi and lets himself be one with the Force. I he don't. I don't think he dies of age. I think the strain of the of the projection is what kills him. Yeah, and he just lets himself become one with the Force. Um, oh, I did have another criticism. They didn't dedicate the movie to Carrie Fisher. She will be sorely missed. They did dedicate the movie to Carrie Fisher. It's in the end credits. Um, the biggest loss of the movie, Admar- Admiral Akbar's death. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a bit flippant. But at the same time, Akbar, again, is only as big as he is because... Fans the fans like him. Yeah, yeah, He's never been an important character. He's always been a background character. It, it, um, it, was, it, was, a, it was almost a shame that there wasn't at least like a close-up shot of him at some point just before it yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. But also that voice actor died, so I guess they wanted, they did do some lines with a new voice actor, but I think they just wanted to get rid of it. Um, the ru- the rumour is that he says it's a trap, as just as the explosion happens. <laughs> oh, but I don't that's... think that's true. <laughs> no, because it's not a trap. <laughs> it's just an attack. Yeah. Um, uh, it's an yeah, attack! They, they... Oh, I'm dead now! They do dedicate the movie to Carrie Fisher. It's in the end credits. Um, yeah, it's after the first round, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, uh, personally, it was a very quotable movie, especially some of Snoke's lines. None of Snoke's lines really stuck in my head, but fair enough. Um, I unfortunately missed Phasma's death because I really had to pee. <laughs> but overall, I really enjoyed it. I'd probably give it 8.5 out of 10. Nice. Um, Doctor Who questions. Are you looking forward to the Christmas what? special? What? There's other things? <laughs> Are you looking forward to the Christmas special? For the first time in a long time, I'm genuinely excited for it. I'm genuinely excited for the regeneration. Yeah, I, I I'm already, not so much the Christmas special. I've already decided I'm tuning in for the last five minutes. Yeah. That's it. I couldn't give a um, f- I could not give a fuck. And the thing that the final nail in the coffin is all the people reacting to the you know, it did a tour it did a screening tour. Oh yeah. At BBC yeah. sites and stuff in the north. And people have been slowly but surely going online to say what they think of it. And it's not good. Like, it, oh. a, lot, a lot of it is because... Uh, so, they've made the reason the Doctor is going to be a woman part of it. Instead of it simply just being the Doctor regenerates and now is a woman. Uh. So this is Moffat. Just, just, just let this sink in. This is Moffat coming up with reasons why the Doctor should be more progressive. I fucking hate Stephen Moffat. I used to like Stephen Moffat, and now I hate him. And also, they've turned the first Doctor into a misogynistic, casually sexist character who reflects awesome. who reflects the sixties. Because you know, the Doctor was always like, "Oh, wait, no, he wasn't ever." No, no, he the wasn't. show just happened to be on in the sixties. Yeah, and it was only yeah. the elderly people of the sixties who were like borderline racist, misogynistic, sexist. Like, for the most part, young people were liberated and free and experimental. So, the fuck? One of the, respons- <sighs> one of the responses I read said there is only one scene where the first Doctor feels like the Doctor. For the rest but of But David it- Bradley is exactly like William Hartnell. <sighs> David Bradley is a fine actor, but if they say that to me one more time, I will puke. Um, on that note, lots of love and Merry Christmas from Jacob. Uh, P.S. Apparently Carrie Fisher had to slap Oscar Isaac 49 times. Uh, did she have to or did she want to? Because um, that's foreplay. Uh, <laughs> um, right, that's all for this week. On that note, um, could I slap Oscar Isaac 49 times, please? Um, Where? That's with the question. my ball. Oh! Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, a Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, enjoy our Christmas episode. We enjoyed making it. Uh, you'll be seeing that. When will they be seeing that, Christopher? When's that going online? They'll be seeing it a week, a week today. It'll be the Thursday uh, 28th for uh, iTunes and, and whatnot. Oh, and, uh, Friday get the some, 29th. Get some, get some leftover turkey sandwiches and enjoy that. Get your festive. eggnog. Should we sh- should we give festive holiday special? Yeah, should we give them a hint? Should we just flat um, out tell them? If you can, <laughs> before you watch the episode, <laughs> you might want to get hold of a copy, and this might be difficult for you uh, because it's never been officially released. You might want to get hold of a copy of the infamous Star Wars <laughs> holiday special <laughs> and have a little watch along. Um, right. Enjoy your Christmas, guys, or whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. Just have a happy holidays. Um, happy we'll holidays. Just, you will hear from us again in 2018. Holy because balls! We've already, because we've already recorded the Christmas special. Yeah. <laughs> um, bye, everyone. Goodbye, my Merry lovelies. Christmas. Stay bye. safe and remember... <laughs> <laughs>